Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so what I had to do for this channel is create an email list. The reason why is because due to the nature of the content of this channel, I don't know when the content is going to just mysteriously disappear or this channel will be shut down. The email mail list is just for the followers or the subs so that you know where these things are just in case this mysteriously happens. So just go down to the link in the description of the video, click join email list, Put your email address in there, and boom, you're good to go. That means that I can also send you other information that I cannot post here on YouTube, and you'll also know where the channel is and where the content is in the event that it does disappear. Okay, let's cook. Okay, people, has Michael Irvin become a Becky retirement plan? Is this what's going on with Michael Irvin? I mean, it's, it's becoming so common now. It's like, do these, do these white female parasites, these clubbers, these sniff girls, you know, who sit around, groupies, using drugs and doing things like that, are looking for opportunity to capitalize off of these young black athletes or these black men's ignorance and detachment from who they are? Do, do these women have like a memo going around in one of their little clubs with a picture of Michael Irvin in it. I mean, as an easy come up, because it's something going on. So Michael Irvin, the Hall of Fame wide receiver, you know, played for the Cowboys, also a commentator for the NFL Network. He's being investigated again for a SEX assault case. Now, the reason why I'm wondering if they have a memo out on this dude is let's do some of the history. Some of the history, y'all. In 1997, Mike Irvin was falsely accused by a woman by the name of Nina Sharavan. Falsely accused. She did admit that she lied. She was sentenced to 90 days in jail for a misdemeanor perjury in connection to that. Okay. So basically, got caught up in a little situation there. Who knows what happened? But this chick, she did lie. And she went to jail for it, which I don't think 90 days was enough, but whatever. It wasn't enough time, man, for, for that right there. That's 1997. So let's go to 2007. He's accused, Michael Irvin, he's accused of SCX assaulting a woman in a hotel room. So in this situation right here, prosecutors didn't press charges. He was sued in civil court by this woman. He countersued for defamation. And there was a confidential settlement here. I don't know what happened. Who knows what happened? Maybe somebody knows what happened. Okay. So we fast forward. In 2017, this chick named Erica Berg, Erica Berg, she accused Mike Irvin of drugging her, then doing the R word to her, and Michael Irvin denied these allegations. Charges were dropped against him. He called these allegations heinous. Now, I don't know what the outcome was, but they had this woman all around. She had her, she had her white lawyer with her. She's crying, you know, looking like a liar, looking like a parasite. This woman, you know, she's another one of those drinkers and sniffers, coke head, party girls, you know, just a parasite waiting to capitalize off a black athlete. Now, I don't know what happened in that situation, if she got a bag off of a civil suit or what, but let's go back. Now, the one in 1997, clearly a lie. She went to jail for it. 2007, he had to pay this chick. He had to pay her, okay? I don't know what happened. 2017, not sure what happened or the outcome, but he hasn't been charged criminally with any of these right here. It's just either it's going to get dropped or whatever. Maybe he got to, you know, give up a bag of money to these women, whatever. Now, people, the latest, this man, Michael Irvin, is in his 50s. He's retired, trying to take it easy. I think he kind of wised up in his years also and trying to fix some things, but these Beckys are still trying to get what they could out, on, out of him, like as if they already know. 
the latest, right before the 2023 Super Bowl, some chick accuses him of misconduct. Now, this man is 56, y'all. They still trying to get him. He's minding his own business here. He's trying to work, you know. And the story goes that Michael Irvin met this woman in a hotel lobby. She called him over to introduce herself. Witnesses who were there said that there was a regular interaction between Mike Irvin and this woman. It was completely harmless. No big deal. He shook her hand and all that, and that's it. Now, my thing with this is this. Immediate problem to me. Immediate problem. This is Michael Irvin, Hall of Fame wide receiver, black man. I don't think some random white chick should be able to call you over to shake your hand. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in that. I don't think that she's, hey, come here. I want to, hey, there's Mike. I want to, nah, 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 nah. None of that. No. You come over here and sit down. You know what I'm saying? Who is she? Whatever. You know what I mean? Just, you can just call Michael Irvin. I don't care where the setting is. But whatever, they know that they have, you know, what kind of power they have and things like that or whatever. And then people like Michael Irvin, he may have thought that this might have been a future opportunity for him to get into some money. I don't know. But the situation here with this is this thing before the Super Bowl and they got rid of him. As soon as this lady accused him of that, Michael Irvin didn't do anything. I mean, he's he was he's being railroaded, right? He didn't do nothing. I mean, he even filed a countersuit for $100 million against this woman who allegedly said that he did something to her, okay? And what's messed up about it is as soon as this woman said that Michael Irvin did this, he was immediately removed by the NFL Network from the Super Bowl coverage. Yes, it's that easy. Now, I think that Mike Irvin might have a reputation amongst these, these white girl groups that he's an easy come up or easy bag. I mean, they probably have a profile on him saying like, you know, he likes to drink. He likes to sniff. He likes that. You know, he likes that perico. He likes them lines. He falls out. He does this, this and that. You, it, it must be some kind of profile that these white parasites have on him who are always trying to look for a come up. You know what I'm saying? I won't be surprised if some of these white girls, husbands or their boyfriends send them out to get him or whatever, because. In this situation with this NFL thing right here, I wouldn't be surprised if this chick or whoever it is is somebody who's the girlfriend or the little side jump off to one of these big time NFL dudes or whatever. I don't know, you know. But the problem with Mike Irvin is he has a reputation for having too many vices in his past, regardless of what he's trying to, you know, do or clear up with his image now or maybe, you know, He's a pastor now, a deacon. I don't know. He went on Dancing with the Stars and everything. But he has a reputation for having these vices of being a party guy, you know, very aggressive, you know, likes the cocaine, likes the alcohol, you know, likes the, uh, you know, the easy, fast white girls at the parties that do whatever, you know, what they're there for. So, and another problem with Michael Irvin is he came up not knowing anything about race or being a black man in America now. He does know about being a victim to racists. He's from the Deep South. That's one thing that a lot of these people get confused. Just because they were victims of racism, like every single black person is, they think, oh, how are you going to tell me I know about racism? Mike Irvin, coming up all those years, he knew absolutely nothing about his race or his people or himself. Now, he knew about being a victim, you know, to white people, but at the same time, there was always white people in his face trying to get something from him and telling him that he was a great athlete. This dude, he's from the deep south, super athlete, you know, super athlete. So a lot of times these guys in their young age, they get kind of confused with, you know, the same white people who are in their faces, smiling at them, patting them on the, uh, between the eyebrows, telling them they're great, offering them money. These are the same people who are the reason why their mom was in a house with her feet swollen up working five jobs and their dad went to jail, you know, for trying to, you know, for stealing a ham, you know, that old dumb stuff that they do to black people. But anyway, they don't know the difference. They just think that these are some new kind of white folks who are good. Anyway, that's the issue with, with, with a lot of these black athletes. But, uh, you know, at 56 years old now, I think that Michael Irvin is finally – probably just starting to understand some things, but his reputation has already been solidified with who he was 
as a young black athlete, and it's really messed up. You know, these women are just doing what they do. They're doing what they're trained to do. You know, if it's not Michael Irvin, it's another one. You know, you see the one back in 1997, she went to jail for lying. She was lying. And I believe that oh, they all lie. I don't, I don't think that, uh, I think that Michael Irvin gets in these environments and the, these girls, they see that they can go ahead and capitalize off it because he's drinking, he's do, using whatever. She's drinking, she's using whatever. They do whatever and they figure, oh, hold up. I can say this, 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 and this. They know this, yo. These white, these white female parasite groupies, they know this. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, things like this that happened to Michael Irvin, man, it, it does not happen to all every black athlete. You know, some of these black athletes, they know how to go to the game, go to the event, and go home. They know it's already a setup. They know that everywhere they go, some of these white folks are trying to set them up. They know if they go into a hood area, they can get robbed for their jewelry or whatever. Either way, you need to go home and chill. There's no outlet, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're around your peoples who you know you can really trust and you're in a safe place. But uh, some of these black athletes know that they're not doing any extracurricular activities unless they're getting paid for it. Where's the contract? No, I'm not coming to your party. I'm not drinking with you. I'm not hanging out with you. Absolutely not. Where's the contract at? That's it. Get out my face. But these guys like Michael Irvin and these other guys, when they're young, they love to be around people partying, drinking. They just kind of like, wow, my, Michael Irvin is a big, aggressive guy. He's kind of a wild man, you know. And I'm not saying that he deserve it for these women to be doing this, but they're but they not going to stop, you know. And I think that he might have found out too late, you know, what it really is in reality. You know, I think that he found out too late, like most of them, you know. And if you if you ever listen to Michael Irvin speak when he's on TV and things like that or whatever, you may see some on social media. He's he, he always seen things through a lens of football as if football was reality or football was life when it's a whole nother world outside of there for his people, you know. He's one of those football guys running around saying, you know, the Cowboys are America's team, all this other BS as if it, you know, means anything. And then at times, guys like Michael Irvin, and then you got these guys like T.O., they call out racism and they sound like they have some sense, you know. But usually the racism that they call out is not the same to them as it is to us. Like, when they get upset, or when they get their feelings hurt, something happens in football or whatever, they'll call out race and they'll be right and they'll be right. But if a lot of these guys, if they got their way completely, if white people continue to pat on them between the eyebrows, you know, tuck, call them big fella and let them get what they want, they would never say anything. But that racism that they speak about would still be there anyway. You know, these guys like T.O., you know, we heard T.O. call out racism. We heard Michael Irvin call out racism and things like that, man. Um, that's why I, I have a hard time watch, stomaching these guys and watching them, you know, especially after their career, when they're sitting there, you know, on TV, on these networks, trying to take the bass out of their voice and speak like a white man and all that. It, it, it's just too disgusting for me to watch. You know what I mean? That's why I can't really watch it. And that's why I really, I don't watch football, you know, not saying that it's a problem with you watching football, don't put that on me. I know you're getting them people over. Well, you said, look, do what you want to do. I said me. You know what I'm saying? I do wish that all these young football players get everything they could get and more because they deserve it all. You know, it's never a black man in football. Or any sport is never overpaid. They always underpaid. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, when these guys get these jobs like Michael Irvin and these other guys where they're sitting there, you know, talking and trying to act articulate, talking about football. Most of these guys, being being a weak, confused black man is usually a prerequisite for that job. A lot of these big white corporations and networks and sports, they don't like, they like those tiki barber type, you know, Kendrick Perkin type shine buck bones, you know, they like them guys, you know, but um, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. This Michael Irvin, Maybe they got a memo out on this. It's too many, too many times where they just seen food. Like these white women are seeing food. Like we could eat him up. Like they just maggots, you know. 
Like they just vultures on him. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it seemed as though Michael Irvin might have been getting it together a little bit, man. It seems it seemed as though he was starting to say some things. You know, he recently, right before the Super Bowl, he made a statement about the NFL using black coaches as scapegoats, which is all facts. This is what everybody should be saying. You know, he went in on the Houston Texans for firing Lovey Smith after one year. And Mike Irvin said he, he, he wasn't feeling that. You know, he wasn't feeling that. He said that black coaches are being used as scapegoats in the NFL. He said that black coaches have been saying this for a long time, but they aren't listened to. They're used as scapegoats for a much bigger problem inside the league. As long as the mentality remains the same, black ho head coaches will remain victims of the league's racism. This has to change and quickly. This is what Michael Irvin said, y'all. So people, well, basically what he was talking about is that old corporate white American trick, okay? So what the NFL does is they'll say, okay, well, we'll give a black man an opportunity knowing that they have this black man walking into a, a dark alleyway or a, a deficit or a deep hole where he will not and can never be successful. They do that on purpose, you know? So they give these uh, black men, these coaches, these opportunities with no guarantees, no long-term, you know, contracts to fix the problem. So somebody like Lovey Smith, he takes the job. He needs to be employed. He fails, which they knew he was going to fail. He was set up to fail. These white folks say, oh, well, look, we gave a black man a chance. We gave him a chance. Look at what happened. Look at what it, this is what they have always done throughout history. They say, look, we give Lovey Smith a chance. Well, let's hire you know, 27-year-old Dick Schmicker, Schmicker, Schmicker's son. He, he, he's a student of the game. This guy never played football before a day in his life. If it's 50 NFL teams, 40 of the coaches should be black. Absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, that's a whole nother thing, man. But this is this typical white American behavior. And this situation with Lovey Smith that Michael Irvin spoke of, this is why these white American races, they love numbers and stats so much because it diverts everyone's attention away from the root of the issues and it gives them a point of view, you know, without with them being able to say, oh, well, no, this is what happened without them looking guilty so that you can't say, hey, no, nah, that's racism. And they can say, oh, well, numbers aren't racist. You know the stupid. They do it to you. They do it to these NFL players. They do it to everybody. They do it to all of us. They come up with these numbers and stats. They come up with the fruit but not the root of the problem. This is what Michael Irvin is speaking of, you know. And this is why I haven't watched the NFL game in so many years. It's absolutely disgusting, you know. They'll let these young men go out there and smash their heads, you know, and play the game, which I like the game. You know, it's cool. I like the game and all that, you know. And these players deserve all the money, but they don't give black people an opportunity outside of that. You mean to tell me we got to be out here running around, smashing our heads and playing physical? I'm not down with that, man. So that's why that I, I just can't stomach watching anything in the NFL. I haven't watched the NFL game for years. Absolutely disgusting, you know. But in this case right here, this situation with Michael Irvin bringing this to notice with Lovey Smith, Michael Irvin, salute to you for that. But... Bro, Michael Irvin, your job as a seasoned black man and a black athlete who knows is to put this fire and this mentality into these young black athletes when they're 19, 20, 21, 22, like the ones you were, the age you were when you were confused about race and everything, you didn't know anything. Your job is to put that in them, you know. Your job is to put that in them. I get it. You got the job of a mentor to these young Dallas Cowboy players, but you're not telling them the truth, bro. Tell these young black players the truth in the same thing that you just said. Then things will change if you change the mindset. You're saying nothing's going to change in the NFL. It's not. You know what I'm saying? Barking about it is not going to, because everything is working perfectly well for these white people. But you, with your influence and who you are, you could actually, the same thing you said about the NFL and Lovey Smith and that racism, we need you saying that to these young boys who popping right now at 19, 20, 21. You know, we can't keep waiting for guys like Michael Irvin, you know, 56 years old, no more star power to start voicing and telling the truth. That got to stop. You dudes got to start talking to these young players when they 19, 20, 21, 22. You know what I mean? That's what's got to happen. So Michael Irvin, yeah, it's good you said that, but come on, man. But anyway, people, 
this Michael Irvin situation, uh, he, he's going to get out of this latest Becky accusation um, because it was clearly something else behind this, man. It, it happened right before the Super Bowl. It's clearly something else behind this, but I do believe that Michael Irvin, he should counter sue and he should get everything that he says he wants, but People, these things, uh, come on, man. You can't keep on, these black athletes just can't keep on building these reputations like this with these vices to where, you know, they make themselves vulnerable to these white supremacist female parasites out here where they know they can do these things to where they even, they even got white men sicking, sicking these white Beckys on these black men to get, the jo- get done what they want done, you know. Hey, maybe I got a contract with this guy and if he gets arrested for something, I don't have to pay him this percentage. Hey, let me let me send Emily over there to him. Yeah, he likes to drink and sniff. This is the type of stuff these white people do, man. It's a shame that Michael Irvin learned this very late in life. But get down in the comments, y'all. Let me know what you think. Anyway, easy.